Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord we God's life. All right. Last video on the Lord's Supper. Second last largely catechized life ever. The penultimate episode, and it will be well, as marginal as the rest. See, we are finishing up the Lord's Supper because Luther has already explained to us what the Lord's Supper is. It is the body and blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of sins that you would eat it and drink it, that you would receive in your mouth the body and blood of Jesus, the actual body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins because he has attached his word to bread and wine. And the word does everything. Because, well, Luther explained, the Lord's Supper rests on God's word and command, God's word and institution, not on your will, not on your understanding or your faith or your intellect or your works, but on his word. And that's better because you can't mess that up because to God's word, he couples a promise. When you eat and drink this bread and wine that have become body and blood, they're for you and they forgive your sins and they give you forgiveness and life and salvation along with them. They strengthen you in faith and in love toward neighbor. They unite you with, with God himself and then therefore with angels and archangels and even all the company of heaven. They do all of these things for you and that should be plenty for you to actually want to receive the Lord's Supper often, that we should celebrate the Lord's Supper often, that we should receive this gift with joy. But if that is still not enough, Luther is going to close down the whole thing by telling us not just what God's promising in the Lord's Supper and giving in the Lord's Supper, but what we're up against everywhere else. In the large catechism, he actually gives us a real simple test as to whether or not you need communion. He would write, what then shall I do if I cannot feel such distress or experience hunger and thirst for the sacrament? Answer, for those who are so minded that they do not realize their condition, know no better counsel than that they put their hand in their bosom to ascertain whether they also have flesh and blood. And if you find that to be the case, then go for your good. See, the scriptures give us a pretty simple task. You pinch yourself. You a person? That means you need the Lord's Supper because God gave it to sinners, people. You. He knows what he's doing. If you really don't feel like you need it, you can at least feel that you're a person and recognize that God in the Holy Word tells you about yourself. In fact, God knows you better than you know you. The Holy Scriptures do not lie to you and they actually explain who you are better than you could figure out on your own. See, I can know from the scriptures that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, that I am God's creature, but I can also know in the scriptures that even if I feel on top of the world, the wages of sin is death. And so when I read the scriptures, I can look to God's law and find out an awful lot about myself that I might not recognize when I look in the mirror or even pinch myself because I can look to the scriptures and recognize that I do not fear, love, and trust in God above all things. I can recognize in the scriptures that I do not fear and love God so that I do not curse, swear, you satanic arts, liar, deceive by his name, but call upon him in every trouble, pray, pray, and give thanks that I do not uh, despite fear and love God so that I do not despise preaching in his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear it and learn and go on to the, all the rest of the commandments. I learn about who I am, what I ought be, and the disconnect. The scriptures tell me about myself better than I can even see by looking in the mirror. So simply this then, am I what God has made me to be? Let's check. Yeah, I need the supper. But more, um, we, we can recognize that the less that we feel it, the bigger problem that is. Luther would continue in the large catechism. But that we do not feel it is so much worse, for it is a sign that there's a leprous flesh which feels nothing, and yet the leprosy rages and keeps spreading. Uh, see, see, here's the thing. Um, if you go out and lay in the snow this winter and eventually you stop being cold, that's not a good thing. That's you dying. Um, if you actually don't feel like you need this, the, the supper, that's a bigger problem that the scriptures are warning you about. So again, take the supper, receive the forgiveness, the life, the salvation, and in it will awaken actually the recognition of what is being given to you that you might even desire it more and more. But if that's not enough, Luther would continue in the large catechism. In the second place, look about you and see whether you are also in the world. Or if you do not know it, ask your neighbors about it. If you are in the world, do not think that there will be any lack of sin and misery. Real simple test, guys. Do you live in a busted up planet? If, if you 
really need help figuring this out, watch the news. You don't even have to ask your neighbor and actually talk to another human being anymore. Just go on Twitter. Look, we need some Jesus. But here's the thing. Jesus has given to you in body and blood. But if that's not enough, wait, there's more. He continues in the large catechism. Besides this, you will also have the devil about you whom you will not entirely tread underfoot, because our Lord Christ himself could not entirely avoid him. If you could see how many knives and darts and arrows are at every moment aimed at you, you would be glad to come to the sacrament as often as possible. Even if you still feel nothing, you have so much more the misery to lament both to God and to your brother. Look at how messed up it is down here. See, here's the thing. That's what most of our struggle with Christianity is. Look at how messed up it is down here. Look at how much I struggle to be a better person. Look at how much it hurts to live in this world. Look at that enemy who is doing nothing but tormenting us all the day long. God knows about it too. See, our big problem with Christianity is that it feels like God is cut off from us in the middle of everything that has gone wrong and we are somehow on our own to climb some ladder up to heaven and escape this mess. This is not Christianity. Christianity is Jesus coming down to you. You see it especially this time of year in Advent where God comes to save his people. And this is one of the ways that God advents. He shows up in body and blood for you to eat and drink because God is not content for you to be left alone in this mess either. He advents to you. He comes to you in body and blood to forgive your sinful flesh, to rescue you from the world, to conquer the devil that even Christ himself could not avoid, but Christ himself has conquered upon the cross. The fruits of this cross, the body and blood of Jesus are given for you at at that altar, at your church, that you would eat and drink forgiveness and life and salvation. Look at what you're up against. Look at what God is promising to give you here in body and blood. Look at what this is and look at who it's for. This, this is for you. So that of all the things wrong, you can have the victory even now. And really, you can have it often. Largely catechized life, one more to go.